I'll first open VS Code, and in this case, I can see the welcome page. Here I'll show that Debugger for Mainframe is installed by going to Extensions, which will list all the extensions that I have installed. You can see Installed at the top left. I have the Code for Z Extension Pack installed, but I've uninstalled the Debugger for Mainframe extension, as you can see. I can click on the blue Install button to install that extension, or I can go back to Extensions and search for this extension. Clicking on the Install button will start the installation, and just like that, the extension is installed. Going back to my extensions and looking at Installed, I can see that my extension is ready. From here, I can see all of the prerequisites, including what Java level I need. Scrolling down, I can get information about how to configure the extension, including some GIFs. If I go to Run and Debug on the left, this is where Debugger for Mainframe lives. But first, we want to open a workspace or a folder. Now I can see the files that are in this workspace. If I click on the gear icon, I can see the existing settings for Debugger for Mainframe. On the screen, we see two debugging configurations, but there can be many. You can have debugging configurations that are shared among team members. In this case, VS Code is synchronized with GitHub, and there are several ways that configurations can be shared among the team. If I scroll to the bottom, you can see that I have a bunch of different configurations that I can use to start a debugging session. If I then click on the dropdown to the upper left, you can see that each of these configurations are selectable to start a remote debugging session. I can create a new one by choosing Add Configuration. If I do that, I first choose the type of configuration that I want. As you can see, there are many types, but for Debugger for Mainframe, there are three of interest. So I'll choose one of the batch configurations. And here you can see that I'm given a template where I can define all of my debugging criteria. What programs I want to monitor, where the symbolic information is for these programs, how to connect to the mainframe that the application will run on, etc. I could also create a new configuration for CICS. And again, there's a set of debugging criteria that I need to provide. Once you are done configuring your debugging criteria, you would want to save the launch.json file. In this case, I have all the debugging criteria that I need, so I won't save this info. So here I want to start a debugging session for batch. If I hit F1, I can bring up the command palette. I'll start typing fetch, and I'm prompted with fetch extended sources. Once I do that, I'll need to choose a connection to the mainframe to fetch the source from. I'll enter my password on that system, and then my extended source will start to be fetched. You can see the status of that on the bottom right-hand corner. Now I have my extended source in my workspace. In this case, it's a COBOL program. However, if you notice, this is plain text. If I go back to my extensions, I can see that I have COBOL language support installed, but I've purposely disabled it. Enabling it shows the extension taking effect. I now have the full power of COBOL language support for this program. Coloring, syntax checking, so if I make some editing mistake, I would see it underlined in red. Okay, back to debugging. So if I scroll down to the procedure division, we can set some breakpoints. If I click on the space to the right of the line numbers, I can set an unconditional breakpoint on that line. If you look to the left, you can see that the breakpoint appears in the breakpoints view. I can also right click that area and edit or delete a breakpoint or create a conditional breakpoint. I can even set up a hit count or simply define a log point where I can record the fact that I've executed this code and continue executing. Okay, now I'm ready to start an actual debugging session. From the run icon on the top, again, there's a drop down where I can select the debugging criteria that I want. I click run or hit F5 and my debugging session starts. On the bottom right, you can see that I've submitted the JCL that was specified in the settings. Once the job starts running, execution will stop at the beginning of the first program that I want to debug. The highlighted line is the one that I'm currently looking at. Looking at the navigation bar, I can step in, step out, step over, continue, etc. Hitting continue, it stops at the first breakpoint. If you notice in the bottom left, the statement trace shows me the lines that have been executed in this debugging session so far. Clicking on a specific entry will position me to that point in the extended source. I can also use the navigation of next and previous to walk back through the execution. Above that, I can see the variables view of all the variables that I have defined to my COBOL program. I can also get information about variables by right-clicking on a variable in the extended source and choosing Add to Watch. 
Adding to the watch view allows me to always see that specific variable. I can hover over the variable to see how it is defined in order to navigate to that variable in the variables view. I can select and edit the variable. Or another option is to right click the variable and choose set value and I can set it from there. There are also some debugger commands that I can use to control the debugging session. I can turn execution counts on or off. In this case, I'll turn it on. To the right of each line, I can see how many times it has been executed. If I'm not interested, I can also turn it off from the debugging console. If I know that I want to always have it on or off, I can set it right from my launch.json settings. Now I'll just continue the execution of my program and it runs to completion.